Good morning, good morning, good morning friends, good morning. This is Diane and I'm coming to you today with another word of encouragement. I am coming to you today with another word from the word of God and it is truly my hope that you will be uplifted today. Your spirits will be encouraged today even as we go through this devotion. I invite you now to just lay aside every weight, lay aside everything that has been on your heart that could probably stop you from hearing what the Lord wants to say to your spirit today. Let's pray. Father, we bless your holy name. We thank you, God, for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. Thank you for giving us this brand new day. It's a brand new day, oh God, that we can worship you, that we can lift up your name, that we can live our best life for you. Lord, it's a brand new start, even for some. So Lord, today, I pray that your perfect will will be done in our lives. Let us not be set back or delayed, Lord, because of anything that the enemy wants to do, because his plan really is to kill, steal, and destroy. But Lord, you came to give life and life more abundantly. So today, O oh God, we accept your gift of life. We accept your gift, O oh God, of this brand new day filled with your mercies. So today, God, bless your people. Cause them, O oh God, to experience you in a new way. In a new way. Give them an encounter with you, God. They will know that truly you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Take charge, O God, of the airwaves and cause your word to go forth unhindered with power, with anointing, and with clarity. So Lord, I thank you right now that lives will be transformed, that things will change because your word, O God, was applied to, to them. So bless us now as we move into what you have to say to us today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. We bless your name, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. We bless your name, Lord. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, we praise you. You deserve it, Lord. You deserve it, you deserve it. us God help us Lord to set you before us continually that's our prayer today that's our prayer today Lord thank you Father friends the Lord is saying to us today set me before you continually keep your eyes on me I am at your right hand close by your side this is the most reliable source of joy, knowing that I am always near. Seek to strengthen your awareness of my presence so you can enjoy me in your moments and feel more secure, communicating with me in silent prayers, in whispers, in spoken words, in shouts of praise is the best way to stay attentive to me. I want you to be real with me in your prayers. Instead of worrying or obsessing about things, turn those thoughts toward me. Talk with me about whatever is on your mind. I will show you my way to handle the person or situation that concerns you. Study and meditate on scripture. Let it saturate your heart and mind, changing your way of thinking. Permeate your prayers with biblical concepts and content. As you stay in close communication with me, the joy of my presence is yours. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I will set the Lord 
before me continually. Friends, that's my song today. That's my psalm today. That's my word today. That's my encouragement to you, friends, to set the Lord before you continually. It doesn't matter what things look like around you. Set the Lord before you continually. Put him first and everything else will be added to your life. We know that's what Matthew 6.33 says. To put the Lord first. Because there is a reward when we put him first. When we put God first, he rewards us. Psalm 16 verse 8 says, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Y'all hear that? I know that the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken for he is right beside me. Friends, from time to time, Situations come into our lives that try to frighten us, that try to intimidate us, that try to push us around. And sometimes if we do not know who we are, these situations can cause us to become flustered. It can cause us to become worried or concerned or push us off that place we had in God. But today, my friends, we're being admonished to set the Lord before us at all times, knowing that he is always with us. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. Sometimes the enemy comes and he roars. He roars. The word of God says he is like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. That word like, it's a comparison. He is not a roaring lion. So he comes and he huffs and he puffs and he tries to frighten you. But the Lord is saying, I am with you. And not just with us, he's with us always, all the time. All we have to do is to make sure that we are cognizant, that we are aware of his presence in our lives. We have to make room for him. We have to make room for him. Because like I've always heard it said, you know, growing up in the church that the Holy Spirit, he's being described as a gentleman, you know, that he doesn't force himself onto us. He comes gently when invited. So we can create that atmosphere around our lives that the Holy Spirit is pleased to dwell. So he comes and he remains with us. He abides with us. He doesn't leave us because we have made room for him. It's just like in our human relationships. If we do not make room for our spouse or, or our children, they're not going to be comfortable around us. Sometimes when they come, if we're busy, we tend to push them away. We tend to say, not now, not now, not now. I'm, I'm doing something now. But if that keeps on happening after a while, they go away and they don't feel like coming back. Mommy's always busy. She's always doing something. Daddy's always at work. He's always doing something. So that's how the humans in our lives feel when they're not getting our attention. So I'm saying, friends, when we make room for the Holy Spirit, when we make room for the Lord in our lives, he comes and he stays. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, he comes and he stays with us. So we need to create that atmosphere for him to do that, my friends. You know, sometimes, right, when we, especially if we fell into something sinful, so just a moment.
Thank you so much. Thank you for your patience. Just have a little dry cough there. <laughs> Trying to take over, but it will not in the name of Jesus. Right, but I was saying sometimes in our lives when we fall into something sinful, what the enemy does, he comes with his voice of condemnation. So even though you would have gone to the Lord and repented, he comes and he says, uh-uh, you're not worthy. You're not worthy. And he tries to get you to feel condemned. <coughs> yes, he tries to get you to feel condemned. While the Lord is saying, you are forgiven. You are accepted. So the idea is to stay with what God is saying. Believe God, friends. Believe God. Just a moment. Stay right there. Just worship. Yes, friends. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your patience. I'm still here. I tell you, right? This enemy doesn't like me at all. If he, if he try one thing and it doesn't work, he comes with something else. Because he's so fighting these devotions in the mornings. But I'm telling you, friends, God's power is greater. Nothing beats prayer. Nothing beats supplication. Nothing beats when you cry out to God and say, Lord, help me. 
because I don't know where that came from. <laughs> oh boy, but God is able, God is able, God is able, friends. I shall continue in the name of Jesus. And I was saying that we have to make up our minds to set the Lord before us, even when we find ourselves in places that we should not be. You understand? Because what the devil does, he comes with his voice of condemnation and then he tries to get you to stay away from the presence of God. So for example, if for any reason, it's not something that you set out to do deliberately, but you ended up yielding. You did it. You did it. Remember now, it, it, we're not blaming any circumstance or situation, but a decision was made to go away from the precepts of God and you fell into sin. You made that decision and afterwards you become remorseful and sorry and you say, Lord, forgive me. And the Lord has forgiven you, but then he rises up. This is definitely for somebody this morning because I'm telling you, I am feeling this one in my core right now. It sounds simple, but this is for somebody. You are stuck in a place of condemnation. The Lord has already forgiven you. The Lord has already said, my child, it's finished. It's over. But the enemy continues to fight you. He does not want you to be free. He wants to keep you in bondage, in that bondage that, hey, you're not, you know, who you say you are. Look at you with your Christian self. Look what you did. If you notice, past tense, past tense. You understand? Friends, do not allow the enemy to trap you in your past your past mistakes, your past sins, those issues that you just want to leave them in the past. Yes, they are good for a testimony in your future, but do not allow the enemy to condemn you. You have made up in your mind that you're going to set the Lord before you. Do not break away from the Lord. Do not break away from that promise, from that covenant. Stay with God. All right? Develop an attitude of praise. Develop an attitude of worship where you keep the Lord always in the front of your life. Always, always. Remember what I read for you here. He said, come to me with everything and come honestly, come openly. You understand? He said, be real with me in your prayers. So when you're praying unto the Lord, friends, open yourself to him. Open everything. Do not leave any stone unturned. You understand? Ask the Lord to come fully into your heart, into your mind, into your life and let him take over because when that happens, my friends, I can assure you that your response to certain things will change. Your perspective will change. You understand? There were some things, my friends, I can, I can be real with you. There were some things that used to just irritate me all the time. Because I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, this is supposed to be a spiritual setting, you know? Why can't we get it as Christians, you know, that the Lord require, requires us to live a certain way? And then these things would come up here and there and I'm like, really, God? Is this what the Christian life is all about? And then the Lord started to teach me. Well, first of all, he started to show me <laughs> some stuff in his word as it pertains to those things that I was concerned about. And one of the verses that has always stuck with me when I start to look around in and become concerned, it's Philippians 4 verse 6. And it simply says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests 
be made known unto God. All right. So he's basically saying, don't worry about anything, even the little irritations, the little things that concern us. Yes, there are times when we will become concerned about certain things. But the Lord is saying, don't worry about it. Just pray about it. You understand? All right. This is election leading up to the election in the BVI. And I'm once again mentioning it because a lot of people are so flustered. Some are confused. Some are worried. You know, some are on the edge, just wondering what will happen next. But my personal response, my friends, is one of prayer and calm. Because I will be okay with God's choice. That's where I am. And I'll tell you this much. As we get closer to the date, because it's next week, Monday, it's the 25th. And those who are a part of these devotions, even if you're not in the BVI or from the BVI or have any connection, please pray for us. Pray with us and for us because we are believing God for his will when the people go to the polls next week. But I'm saying so many people are worried, you know, worried about the outcome, worried about what's going to happen, worried, worried. But no, no, my friends, I'm not worried. I'm secure because I know that the Lord is about to make a statement in the nation. He is about to show up and show out and a statement will be made. You know, I shared with the brethren at my church on Sunday that regardless of who wins or what happens, the country will be heading into a new direction a new direction because you see the old thing will no longer work even in nations some people believe that you know the Lord doesn't have anything to do with these kinds of things this is just the will of man and the power of man and I dare to differ because God's will will be done so friends just pray for us all right so I'm not worried so it's along those lines that I'm sharing this, that I trust God enough to know that whatever he does will be well done, well done, because I've made a decision to set the Lord before me continually. So I trust him. I trust what he does. I trust his judgment. So it is with our very lives. When we have placed our lives in the hand of God, friends, don't worry about it. Don't pick it up again because sometimes that what, that's what we do. We give God the issues and the trials and the struggles and then we pick them up again. Why? No. Leave them with him. Lay your burdens down and leave them there. Do not pick them up again. It's not for you to carry. That's what I've done. That's what I've been doing, my friends. The enemy is trying all types of things. He's pushing here trying to squeeze in there but I know who I am in God and I know where I stand with God and I know that God is more than able to see me through and if he can do it for Diane he can do it for Cindy he can do it for Simone he can do it for Jacqueline you understand friends he can do it for you he'll do it for Cecilia he is doing it right the fact that he's keeping you alive once there's life, there is hope. Hope in God. Trust in the Lord. He will turn your situations around. All right, friends? So that's really my encouragement for you today to set the Lord before you continually. Continually. All right? It doesn't matter what happens. As I mentioned to you, even if you find yourself in a place that the Lord did not put you or the Lord didn't send you, Remove yourself from that environment and run back to God. He's waiting with open arms to accept you. Don't let the devil fool you. Don't let him tell you that you're finished. No, no friends. You understand? If, if some of us were to share the dark places, the type of mud that the Lord picked some of us out of, it would really encourage others and that is why i testify friends 
That's why I testify from time to time. I share my life because I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. Right? I've been set free. I've been delivered. So the most that we can do right now is just tell the truth and shame the devil. All right? Don't let him hold you chained to your past. Sometimes people look at you and they say, I know what you used to do. And that's the problem. Used to. That's past tense. But who am I now? I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You understand? There is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. You have to know who you are. All right? When you said yes to Christ, he never promised you a bed of roses, but he did promise to be there with you every step of the way as long as you let that atmosphere remain conducive to his presence. He will abide with you. We sing these songs, but we must make room for God in our lives. If we want to see our lives turned around, if we want to see things changed, we must. All right? So I'm going to pray now. Just for somebody who maybe is feeling like, you know, this Christian walk, I, you know, I, I, I don't think I can do this. I don't think I can make it. Yes, you can. With God's help, you can. Those who are saying, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm, 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 I'm not well. The Lord can heal you, friends. Okay? The Lord can heal you. Yes, he has healed me. He has healed me even from the clutches of witchcraft. You understand? So when I'm talking and I'm testifying, I'm not talking empty words or something I know nothing about. Been there, done that, wore the t-shirt. You understand? Some people say, oh, those things are not real. Really? The spiritual realm is way more real than the physical. There's nothing that we're seeing with our eyes that did not begin in the spiritual realm. So let's educate ourselves. Let's not be naive. The Lord allowed me to be attacked so that I can know, so that I can help others. Because you see, one of the biggest lies that the enemy tells people, and some are biting it, is that he's not real. That he's not real. Some people are looking for this horned being with a, a pitchfork running around. Well, if it's that you're waiting for, you're, you're not going to see it. If that's what you're looking for, you may not. You may never see that. But the enemy, he has one agenda. To kill, steal, and destroy. And if he has to use somebody, use whatever foolish things to try and get at your life, he will do it, whatever it takes. So that's why, friends, we have to stay prayed up and we have to stay hidden in God. Do not come out. Don't come out from under God's covering to come and experiment or try out anything. You may not like the consequences stay in God stay in God all right he can heal you you have an illness you don't know the origin the doctors are not able to tell you what it is they cannot make a proper diagnosis turn to the Lord do not go to any other source. Do not let any family member or friend make any foolish suggestions. I know of people who have done that. Quick, quick, quick thing. Time is gone, but a, a, a quick story I'm sharing with you. There was a family that lived right here in the BVI. The wife is on Facebook. I, I, don't, I don't think she's on the devotion now, but even if she was, she could back up everything that I'm saying. They were living here in the BVI and the husband got sick and he had relatives in the U.S. who said, come, come, bring him, bring him. We will see about him. 
see about him is right. When they got to the States, the first order of business was to go to this place. Apparently, that was supposed to be the doctor's appointment. Put the doctors in quotations. And she said when they got to the place, it looked, it didn't look like, you know, a regular clinic or hospital or any medical facility. So she asked, what is this? And they said, let's just go inside. When they got inside, she was told, imagine, this is her husband, you know, and she was told, wait here. So they put her to wait somewhere and then they took him in the back. So while she was sitting there, she said she started to look around at the surroundings and she saw candles here, candles there, all sorts of things scattered all about and she started to feel uneasy. So she started to say to one of the other family members, what is this place? What is this? What is going on here? And they basically said to her, you want your husband to get better or not? She said, yes, but I need to know what is going on. And she started to demand answers. And when they wouldn't give her the answers, she, she said she barged right in and said to them, me and my husband leave in. And they left that facility. The family members got upset with her, said, oh, we thought you wanted your husband to be well. We thought you wanted him to get better. She said, yes, but not like this because she realized that it was no traditional doctor, was not even no bush doctor either. It was the witch doctor. You understand? Because doctors could not tell this man, regular medical doctors, what was wrong with him. So the family decided we're gonna take things up in our own hands. Long story short, the man eventually died, died and left her, his young wife, with a small child, young widow. You understand why? Because something came up and the power, they believed that there was another power that they could turn to. So I'm saying, friends, be careful. The consequences may not be good. So hold on to God. You're not sure? Run to God. When I was attacked spiritually, yes, it was a spiritual attack. That's what it is. Nobody even suggested any foolishness to me. I, I, <laughs> Lord have mercy. But I'll say this. I had to go home to Jamaica to seek medical attention because everybody was recommending me to the same doctor, same medical professional. And I went and did all sorts of tests as recommended by him and nothing. But oh, the Lord revealed it all through a simple man, a simple taxi man on a trip that I would say should not have even happened but God set it up that way and everything was revealed. Now, the strange thing is, now, who does stuff like that and confess under the power of God? The person that did that to me confessed, confessed. True, true story, confessed. While I was in Jamaica, that information was coming to me from this taxi man. Man does, doesn't know me. My testimony is on here. You can go on my YouTube page. You'll see it. All right? The woman responsible for that was here in the BVI confessing to my mother what she had done. And let me tell you, friends, there is nothing like the power of forgiveness. You hear what I tell you? Because the Lord gave me the opportunity to come face to face with that woman many, many years after. And I realized that I had let the thing go. Because when I found out, I was, I was upset. Oh yes, I was vexed. I'm like, what did I do to this woman? Why did she do that? What did I do? Friends, these are questions that you will never you may never get the answer to. Never. But the Lord knows. So don't worry. 
It's not all the time he's going to reveal the source and all of that. You, you know, because some people pray for the day when that happens. But I'm saying, even if God never reveals it, just know that he has you in the palm of his hands, protected. They wanted to kill me. That was the goal. But oh, they failed miserably. But the Lord took me through that so that I can help somebody else. You understand? So don't let anybody tell you any foolishness about all oh, these things and only if you believe in them. You don't have to believe in something for it to exist. Let's just learn that. All right? So please, if you're facing anything, whatever, it doesn't have to be illness or anything, anything, financial troubles, and the enemy comes and he's making suggestions, just take this or take that no. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he will strengthen you in the process. All right? So may the Lord bless you today. Let's pray. And just ask the Lord to lead us, to guide us, to be with us, to help us, to set him continually before us. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us your word. Thank you, Lord, for your revelations to our lives, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Help us to keep you at the forefront of our lives. Because, Lord, you are good. You take great care of your children. Lord, you have been taking care of us for a very long time. So we trust you now, O oh God, to continue doing what you have always done. Lord, I pray a special prayer today for those who are going through, Lord. You see their various trials, their struggles, their tribulations, the crosses that they have to face in various aspects of their lives, oh God. Some are facing it on the job. For some it's at home. For some it's even in the very church that they attend. So Lord, right now I ask you to bring peace and calm to every storm, every raging situation, oh God. So that they can see you in all of this. Cause them to see you, God, to see your hand at work in their lives, Lord. Sometimes we're, 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 we have heard, oh God, to trust you when we cannot trace you. Lord, help us to do that. Help us to understand that you are carrying us, even when we see just one set of footprints in the sand, oh God. Those are your prints as you carry us through the storms of life, as you carry us through the various challenges, oh God. Heal broken marriages. Heal marriages, oh God, that are on the rocks. Those relationships that there is no understanding or communication, things have broken down. Third parties have come into the mix. Lord, you can do it. You can bring total healing and restoration to every broken situation. Cause hearts, oh God, to become soft again. Hearts to become forgiving. Hearts that are open to love again. Mighty God. Do it for your people, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, do it, do it. Do it for your glory. You will get the honor. You will get the praise, oh God, when they testify of how you turned things around miraculously. Lord, I thank you right now. Those who are having issues with their children, Lord, those who are acting up, carrying on, Lord, I pray for strength for the parents. I also pray for wisdom to lead these children aright. Lord, I pray that you will break 
every evil force from off their lives that's coming against them to frustrate them and cause them to feel like they're nobodies. Lord, cause your people to experience your love, your unfailing love, Lord. Love, love, love. Help us, Father, even to love one another. That love that covers a multitude of sins, Lord. Help us, Father, to love that kind of way. Those who are struggling with unforgiveness, oh God, speak to hearts right now. Yes, Lord, the pain was great, but they can let go. Yes, Lord, I know what you did for me. So you can do it, oh God, for your people today. Just cause a peace to flow over their lives, even now. Where they get a brand new perspective, oh God, of your love for them. And as a result, they can see other people through your love. Yes, Lord, sometimes it's difficult especially when you're under constant attack. But Lord, you're more than able to see your people through. So Lord, I thank you right now that you're shifting things in the atmosphere over all of our lives. We will start to see changes. We will start to experience you, oh God, in a real way. Lord, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you for being real to us. Thank you, Father. Bless your people now. Abundantly. Let your manifold blessings, O oh God, surround your people this day. Lord, I thank you. I bless your holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your joy. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your love, Lord. You have given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. And we will walk in that, Lord. We, we have no lack in you because you know exactly what we need, when we need it, and you're never late. You're never late. So I thank you, God. Do for us more than we can ask or think. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. My friends, God is good. Make up your minds to set the Lord before you at all times. Yes, just do it. Set the Lord before you and watch him turn your circumstances around. The forces of darkness, the forces of evil cannot overpower you when you're hidden in God. All right? Cannot. It doesn't matter where the fiery darts are coming from, where those evil arrows are coming from. They cannot prevail. They will never prosper over you. Never all right so you stay in god some of them wondering how come what they have done has not affected your life as yet how come you're not dead yet i'm just being real yeah the enemy he's behind a lot of the attacks that come to your life but don't worry don't fret sometimes if the lord should show you where some of these things are coming from it would shock you you understand? Because it's people who laugh and smile and hug and kiss and yeah. That allow the adversary to use them for his purposes. That's the age that we live in now. All right? Not going over the devotion. I'm just saying, hang in there with God. Because no weapon formed or fashioned against their life shall prosper. And every tongue that has already risen up against you in judgment shall be condemned because a lot of things <laughs> being said in the atmosphere towards the lives of God's people nowadays so you cancel them all 
cancel them. You get up every day and you declare God's word over your life and cancel out the plans of the enemy. Do not allow those evil words to sit in the atmosphere over your life waiting to manifest. The blood of Jesus covers you. But you must open your mouth, friends, and take charge. Take control. Use the authority that the Lord has given you. Let me tell you, I was radical before I got saved. And since becoming saved and following through with God, oh yeah, yeah. Because some people have that fire in them before and as they come to God, they're like little lambs. Let me tell you something, friends. There's a lion and a lamb in each of us and you must know when it's time to be what? Meekness does not mean weakness, my friends. And that's the problem. Sometimes, you know, the adversary, he looks at you and he doesn't even know who you are. But once you know who you are in God, you have nothing to fear. All right? So let him misread you and misunderstand you and think that you're a little wimp because, you know, no, no friends. There is power in you. There is power in your words. The Bible declares in Proverbs that life and death are in the tongue. You can use your tongue to create the victory in your life. The Lord created this world with the spoken word. All right? So don't use your tongue to cuss and swear and no, 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 no. No, no, right? I used to do that. Well, not so much the swearing, but I used to cuss, just cuss. <laughs> Jesus! Thank the Lord for saving grace, right? But over time, he has, you know, he's still working on me. So, don't fight one another. Join forces and come against the enemy. All right, the devil, that's who our common enemy is. Yes, some people allow him to use them greatly, and that's sad. Okay, but don't worry, friends, the Lord is with you. All right, so you take care now. Have a wonderful rest of week, right? Stay in prayer, stay in the word, because if you don't know the word, any Tom, Dick, or Harry can come and tell you the Lord said or thus said the Lord and it's not in his word. All right? So don't get fooled. Stay alert. All right? So may the Lord bless each of you today, every one of you. Thank you for sticking it out with us this morning. Had some challenges earlier. But to God be the glory. To God be the glory. He gave us the victory. All right? So until we meet again in this fashion, please, friends, take care.